was Warframe 10 years ago. Back then, the team at Digital Extremes were celebrating tiny milestones. Today we're celebrating a thousand likes on Facebook. Skip to today and Warframe has gone through many changes, not least in logo design. But the core gameplay loop remains. Shoot the bad guys, use cool powers, collect loot. And more and more players are jumping into a game that has gone from celebrating a thousand likes on Facebook to supporting over 70,000 concurrent players each month. Which begs the question, is it too late to start playing Warframe? This is Warframe's huge annual convention, Tenocon, a gathering of super fans, content creators and the developers. And I can't think of a better place to find out. We have 10 years of Warframe that's been built, and we're about to make it feel like this one connected sci-fi weird MMO that finally and readily is about to get a lot weirder. What makes Warframe so great and enduring is the huge variety of things you can do in it. The nearest mainstream equivalent is GTA Online, and even that doesn't come close. It really is that diverse. If you like sci-fi games like Destiny, Eve or Mass Effect, or do you prefer collecting loot in something like Borderlands or Diablo, or do you just love min-maxing in games? If you answered yes to any of these, then Warframe is for you. The gear you get also gives you different playstyles. Seriously, the options you have get wild. There's a, a frame that eats his enemies, and to add insult to injury, he can spit out their digested bodies as projectiles. Warframe's biggest gameplay principle is, you want to do what? That sounds cool, go ahead and do it. You want to fire 30 homing missiles that lock onto enemy ships in the middle of a dogfight? Do it, you can be invisible at the same time. It's something I very much appreciate at Warframe that is, it's, it's very easy to pick up and very easy to put down, and the game never feels like it's judging you for that, which is just a very unique experience at the moment, sadly. Unlike other free-to-play games, they don't lock stuff behind paywalls or time gate stuff. They don't try and force you to buy stuff with real money. The game even tells you to take a break when you've been playing for over an hour. Most missions are super short at 10 to 15 minutes. And this relaxed attitude also trickles down to the player base. Everybody I've interacted with here is super lovely and super relaxed. There are two things about the game that I would warn you about that could turn some people off. While there is a fantastic story with amazing cinematics, it doesn't get going until about 20 hours in. And it's also a game that doesn't tell you too much once you've got past the tutorial. You have to look stuff up, which isn't a problem for me because I love guides, but I understand if that would put some people off. So what about this amazing space opera of a story is so good? Let's take a look at what you need to know about the story. We're members of an ancient warrior cast. We're called the Tenno. That's what the player faction is. We are using the Warframes to keep the balance, keep the peace in the solar system, but we're very mercenarial. We're not exactly good guys. We're not exactly bad guys. We're kind of on the more light and positive side of things, but at the end of the day, you gotta pay the bills. Those bills are, I want more weapons, make me a god. You got these kids who are the Tenno and they use space magic to control these biomechanical power suits called the Warframes. And each Warframe has their own like unique powers, abilities that can either protect or my favorite part, blow stuff up. But actually underneath is actually this really compelling story about discovering who you are and what that means. And I just think it's, there's something very special about having this kind of game be about a personal journey and personal growth. So while it's your standard save the universe setup, there's so much more that I've left out. It's been built on constantly for 10 years, so there is so much more to discover here, but I just wanted to keep it simple as a jumping off point. For more on the story and the lore of Warframe that goes into much more detail, I've linked a great video down in the description that you can check out if you want to. You get three classes, or more accurately, three different Warframes to pick from when you first start the game. We've got a sword melee Warframe called Excalibur, a defensive electric stunning Warframe called Vault, but as a newbie myself who tested them all out beforehand, I would personally recommend Mag. I mean, Excalibur's the poster boy, but I prefer Mag. Uh, every time I restart, I always go with Mag because I just, I think like pull is just a great 
just it's just a great um, opportunity for new players to be able to you know get that to you. You can use that melee early. You can kind of control things. So I, yeah, I like Meg. Each Warframe has four abilities that they can cast. Think of them like spells. The more powerful the ability, the more energy it costs to cast. That's what's great about Mag, is that the abilities are super useful for new players, easy to understand, and don't use much energy. Mag's pull ability pulls every enemy in the area to just in front of you, and stuns them, making it easy for you to take out huge groups of enemies in one swipe. Mag also has an ability called Magnetize, which tears through bosses or higher level enemies. Point at the big bad in front of you, cast Magnetize, any bullets you shoot into that ball will ping around over and over, harming anything within it. Honestly, unloading one clip and anything in that ball is always dead. Finally, Mag has an innate ability to hoover up any dropped materials, ammos, items and upgrades. Again, for a game that is a looter shooter, not having to actually loot saves so much time. So now I've convinced you Mag is the best starting Warframe, let's take a look at the weapons you have to choose between, because if you pick one and you don't like it, you might be stuck with it for a long time. Oh, for me at the start of the game, I go Bratton every yep. time just because I really like the way it sounds and plays. For your main weapon, I'd suggest the Bratton, which is your standard assault rifle, and it's great. The other option you could choose is Paris, which is a bow that's fine, but has a really low fire rate and is mostly good for stealthy missions, which there are not that many of, and our sidearm can be used as a stealthy weapon if we need it. That stealthy sidearm is the kunai, which I suggest taking over the lato, which is your other option, as we do need some stealth sometimes, and lato is great, but not worth being so loud for. For our melee weapons, we have both the Skarna swords and the bow staff, and they're both great, but if you're choosing mag, who can pull enemies to right in front of you, the bow is lethal when there is a clump of enemies lying on the floor in front of you, begging to be bopped. This combination of Warframe and weapons is what I enjoyed the most and was the most efficient for me as a beginner, but feel free to pick any that appeal to you or your playstyle. So how do you get new Warframes, weapons or items? Do they drop with glowing colours like Borderlands? Or do you have to run endless dungeons hoping the RNG gods will be kind to you and reward you at the end like in Destiny? Nope. It's neither of those random, unlucky and frustrating ways that will have you sacrificing money or time at the altar of the RNG gods, praying they look kindly on you. In Warframe, you buy a blueprint of the armor or gun for peanuts. It lists the things you need to build them, and it even tells you where to find them. It really is the most upfront and fair game that I have ever encountered when it comes to getting what you want. Obviously, there are hoops to jump through, and you have to put time into farming, but you always feel every minute you're getting closer to your desired goal, and none of it is wasted time. Even when I'm like, this is the best time I've had with Destiny, but you know, it kind of sucks that I didn't get the drop I wanted. Whereas with Warframe, I'm like, I had a great time. That was good. I really enjoyed that. If you're even remotely interested in playing it, you will get so much more of the game than you will ever expect to. You can get nearly everything in the game for free just from farming. But if you want to skip farming, you can straight up buy the items you want. There are even regular sales, but you really don't have to spend any money. You know, I didn't put any money into it until I must have put in like 60 hours or something. Okay, so now you've got your Warframe, you've got your weapons, and you've done the tutorial mission. Now you're left in your spaceship, looking out into the vastness of the Warframe universe. What do you do next? Well, first off, you're going to want to unlock access to all of the planets, which invariably means completing all of the missions on one planet before you can skip off to the next. If you want to do story-specific missions, you'll need to go over to your codex station over here, bring up the menu and select the quest or story you want to follow. A blue flashing triangle will appear on your star chart for which mission you need to do for that quest. The blurred out ones are ones you can't do yet, and some of the missions you do try might actually be too hard for you without expressingly telling you so. So think about joining up with others to make it easier. The game even automatically teams you up with other people. Up to four players can be put into a squad for each mission, and playing with other people is one of the things I've truly loved about Warframe, as you get to watch other people activate some bonkers abilities. I regularly make notes on future Warframes or weapons I want from seeing other people use them, and it's great fun being able to play with high-level friends and not feel like they're carrying you too much. There is no huge separation between myself who's played for thousands of hours and a friend who played for 10. Yeah, I'm stronger, but we can still play next to each other all the way. 
The vast majority of the game is PvE, but there is some PvP if that's what you're interested in. There are over 21 mission types that really help to keep the gameplay feeling fresh, with things like spy missions where you have to hack into terminals without being spotted. Honestly, it feels like Metal Gear sometimes. There are also defense missions where you have to battle wave after wave of enemies as you cut through them like a Dynasty Warriors character. There is space combat, there is overboard surfing, there is apartment customization, there's open world, you've now got horse riding in the game. There's just all these different games under the one hood and yet somehow it all fits. It is, it is a very bizarre and unique thing and it really is free to do all that stuff. So once you've enjoyed jumping into a few missions, your next goal is to unlock the whole star chart and be able to travel to any planet in the system, because that is when the story really starts to kick into gear. Only issue is unlocking all of the planets will take between 50 and 100 hours, and that's when the story starts to get good. It's one of the few drawbacks of Warframe is that the story doesn't kick in sooner, but I do have a solution. The Daviru Paradox. The Daviru Paradox was introduced in 2023 as an open world roguelike story within the Warframe world, with new players in mind. It's a very fun romp that's very different to the traditional Warframe, but if you're looking for a story itch to scratch at any point, I'd suggest jumping into the Daviru Paradox from your menu. Once you've beaten the tutorial, unlocked all the planets and finished the Daviru Paradox, you're in the end game which is all about min-maxing your characters and weapons through mods, and to do that, you're going to need guides. It really is a guide game. If you're one of those people that feel like they're cheating if you look up a guide or tips on what to do, then you won't get the most out of Warframe. As well as the standard Googling next steps, there's a fantastic bunch of YouTubers making great content about what you can do in Warframe. People like the Kenjineer and the Nightmare Frame, who I've talked to for this video, are great at breaking down the insane things that are possible and amazing builds you can play around with. Brozheim, I always love to see what uh, he, what his opinions are on like the dev stream will end and then we'll see what the reactions are. And I really like the Kenjineer's work. I cover the more statistical, mathy topics that no one wants to address in the first place. Break it down into the simplest terms so that everyone can get the most out of the game without having to break out the calculator. I'll do that bit. Yeah, I'm kind of old school, so I like I still visit the Warframe wiki because the wiki is the best source of all. You know, it's and it and it's not you know it's not our wiki. It's uh, it's something the community has created, which is amazing. Original Wicked Fun does some great videos each week on the tweaks and changes to the meta, game modes and the like. Mr. Warframe Guide does some funny videos all about Warframe. MH Blackie has some great guides for you beginners out there. Brozyme has done a comprehensive video on the whole Warframe story and is one of the biggest Warframe YouTubers out there. So if in doubt, check out Brozyme. Uh, returning players to come back because I feel like we're just getting started. We have 10 years of Warframe that's been built and we're about to take it all and just enhance, go deeper, make it feel like this one connected sci-fi weird MMO that finally and you know readily is about to get a lot weirder. If you're away from Warframe for a year, you're always gonna feel like you're coming back to kind of a new game. I think the ability to hop back in is probably one of the coolest things that the new team has been working on, is that making it a way so that anybody who has been away from the game for any amount of time can come in, jump in, understand where they are in the story and get back into it. Warframe has changed a lot for a lot of reasons. So for the past three years, we added more open worlds, harder content with Steel Pass, roguelite systems in Duveri, and that is because we wanted to make Warframe as densely packed with genre as possible while still making sure the core gameplay is supported in every one of these areas. And eventually you will become the best, that's okay. You'll be able to clear Steel Path, no problem. You'll be able to do Duveri with your eyes closed. And that's okay, because maybe in a couple months we'll have one more thing for you, so. For me, watching the meta evolve year over year, we have made some changes. We've touched a lot of different things to try and always ride the line between power fantasy and not making the game unfun for other people or an automated experience. You know, you can really see players still using Wukong a lot. AoE is really popular still. So it's not as though we've created some kind of reckoning for these things. We've just kind of tamed the beasts, so to speak. Warframe is always being tweaked. Hell, the meta has probably changed in the time I've taken to edit this video, so instead I'd suggest you check out places like the Overframe website, which is great for updates and tier lists. Brozyme does a full comprehensive roster review every year, which is great. And as I mentioned before, Original Wicked Fun does some great videos each week on the tweaks and changes to the meta that week. 
Oh, I'm so glad I started this journey with Warframe. Like I say, there, there's nothing like it in games. It is, it is truly one of a kind. It is very, very special. Sam's right. Warframe is a very, very special game. And I hope I've managed to get across to you how unique this game is. If you enjoy a sci-fi game, or a shooter, or a looting-based game, you really need to give Warframe a try. With it being completely free on so many platforms, I guarantee you will get something out of this game. Okay, so the story might take a while to get going, and you're gonna have to rely on guides for it. But is it too late to play Warframe? Absolutely not. Just don't blame me if you can't stop playing it.